So GCC for Minds and Works. Let's start unpacking that. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys new to this channel, my name is Zanella. If you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe button below and remember to press the notification button so you get notified every time I upload new content. So one of the most frequently asked um, questions or a topic that a lot of guys ask about that I haven't actually touched on in, in any amount of detail at all is GCC for Minds and Works. So we have spoken a bit about GCC for factories with the legal requirements and the factory and practical requirements. And I think I've unpacked it to somewhat a level of, of detail that has been satisfactory to some guys. I know a couple of you guys have passed your plant and law exams. What I'd like to do now is touch a bit more on the minds and works. There are synergies and similarities, but there are specific differences in your application process. So we'll start off with the basics. So the requirements. So for those of you that haven't checked out any of my previous video on the GCC, so GCC is the Government Certificate of Competency, which is a recognized certification for someone who would have a level of authority and responsibility for machines and equipment and also for people's safety. This is a legal appointment from the Department of Labor and also for Mines and Works, you want that authorization from the Department of Mineral Resources. So let's start with the qualifications. So what qualifications do you need for you to be able to qualify and then write to the exams for the GCC Mines and Works? So I'll break it down into four different buckets. So the one is your BSCB and your equivalent degree in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. For electrical engineers, this must be heavy current. Whether you go to your UJ, your VETS, your UCT, Stellenbosch, if you got your degree with the relevant NQF level in engineering for mechanical or electrical, then you then qualify to be able to then take the next steps in obtaining your GCC. The second bucket is your BTEC. So if you've got your BTEC degree in mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, specifically heavy current. So if you're focused on light current, you may not necessarily have all the subjects and requirements for you to obtain the GCC for mines and works. The third bucket is if you've got your S courses and you've got your diploma, also with the relevant experience that you would need to get in industry for you to complete your P1 and P2, then you also qualify to then take the next steps for your GCC. So last but not least is when you've got your trade certificate. So I will share in another video which trades and you're a mill right, a fitter, which ones specifically are the ones that you're requiring to have in the minimum years of experience and industry that you require. Just starting off the basic requirement, you must have a trade and your N6 diploma, and then you also qualify to then take the next steps for you to then obtain your GCC in Mines and Works. So if you've passed your two exams, GCC for factoring, you've got your certification, and you're then looking to get a GCC for Mines and Works, you also do qualify. So one might think you're exempt and that the requirements are exactly the same, but you also need to follow almost the same process and requirements as someone who's starting off from scratch. So with your GCC for factories, you need to obviously submit your GCC for factory certification and demonstrate that you've got a minimum of one year's experience in industry. Therefore, you might also get the opportunity to qualify as a candidate for you to then train. Thereafter, you apply to sit in on the exam and after passing the two exams, you get your certification for, for Mines and Works. Just high level, one of the differences between GCC for factories and one for Mines and Works is that for factories, after your qualification and your minimum experience, where you do your write-up, you then apply to the Department of Labor to try and get your um, acceptance into the exams, write the exams, and then you're through. However, with works and mines, you must first apply as a candidate for the GCC with Department of Mineral Resources for you to then get your years of experience, have your write-up. Thereafter, after you've submitted, you then qualify to write the two exams if they give you the acceptance. So remember, you need to first apply as a candidate with the Department of Mineral Resources, get acceptance by the Commission of Examiners for you to then apply even further to sit in on the two exams. The two exams that you're needing to pass, one is legal knowledge, and I will share a bit more about that. You've got the Occupational Health and Safety Act, but you also have Mines Health and Safety Act which, and its regulations. And the second exam that you're needing to pass is your plant exam. Look, you can write the exam in whichever order that you wish. I have shared examples and tips as to whether to write the legal one first and then the plant exam or both at once. I have seen individuals and, and guys who actually have been following the channel who've gone and written both exams and, and actually got a pass mark. So ultimately, it's up to you. It's all dependent on your learning styles. So check out the next couple of videos where I will start unpacking 
which trade qualifications are acceptable, the number of years experience that you need for each, where you must get your experience from, and also the application process, number one, as a candidate, number two, to get acceptance into writing the exams, and also the different syllabi and the requirements for you to then find success in obtaining your GCC Minds and Works. Share your comment below if there is any specific information that you're looking to get out of the series of these videos with the GCC Minds and Works. And remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shout.